This episode is nuts. Talk to Zev Jachman about bankruptcy. And I was joined by Tehran. He's always hilarious, but Zev and I talked after the podcast and we were like, how does this guy know so much about bankruptcy? And I have no idea. I know he's not preparing because he just shows up and he's like, who, who are we talking to today? So it was interesting how much he had to say about the nuances of student loans and everything else that came up in the discussion about bankruptcy. But Zev touched on something really interesting. He talked about railroads and how that has to do with the American backbone of bankruptcy law. I just finished reading Yuval Noah Harari's book, Homo Sapiens, and in it he describes how the first commercial railroad wasn't open until 1830 in Great Britain. And then by the end of the 18th century, there was a quarter of a million tracks, a quarter of a million miles of tracks of railroad crisscrossing all over the Western countries, like enough to wrap around the world several times. Whereas in the Eastern countries of the world, there was a meager 2,000 miles of railroad tracks. And it's not for lack of technology. The Chinese knew how to make railroads. It was because that or the societies on the Western side of the world were organized and thought about things differently. Namely, their ability to pump money into research and development. So Yuval Noharari discusses how until the 1500s, nobody was doing any cool science projects from capitalist money. No one was investing in things like that. Take Christopher Columbus, for example. He had to pitch his idea of going to set sail to try and discover new land to the king of Portugal and got shot down, almost like he was on Shark Tank, and people were like, no, 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 until finally one of them took a risk. And around that time, countries started taking risks and betting on wars and betting on other things where they were investing money on the bid of a better future, of a better tomorrow. And that credit system is how the world experienced real and true economic growth. Every dollar that's printed today has been lent over 10 times in its circulation. So there's a lot of money being pumped into the economy that's way more than whatever income is being produced. And that's because people are betting on the future. And one of the reasons why people feel comfortable to bet on the future is because of this backstop of bankruptcy. The railroad system was something that the federal government got involved in. They were giving away free land to railroad companies. There were some nefarious actors that were in bed with government people, almost literally, but they were growing it too fast. It ballooned too quickly and it almost collapsed. And the bankruptcy code is what saved these railroad companies. And that's how it was birthed, at least the first era of the modern bankruptcy code. But Zev has so many different interesting nuances and perspectives about the bankruptcy code. And I walked away learning so much more and was really entertained. This was a great episode. Be sure to like and subscribe. We're going to talk about bankruptcy. We're going to make bankruptcy sexy. It's going to be very fun. Okay. So what do you mean by sexy? Is it like, oh, hey, what's up, girl? I'm bankrupt. <laughs> She's mm -hmm. like, ooh. Yeah, it's turning. It's That's exactly why we're here. We have a bankruptcy expert and a professional pickup artist. And we're going to fuse the two together to learn the intersection between courtship and bankruptcy in court. Okay, so what's a professional pickup artist? I don't know. I'm just glad that I wasn't someone who was bankrupt. Yes. So I'm glad that I'm glad I'm, the turn, the twist was good for me. You know? Okay. Yes, and energy today. Yeah. Okay, have... this is what we need from you, Tehran. Okay. So bankruptcy, there's personal and there's business stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, how can we help the little guy? And does bankruptcy just end up a tool for rich people or rich companies? Uh, both are are true. Uh, it is it is both. It helps the little guy, and it's a tool for for the rich and big companies. Uh, and uh, it's a really basic, fundamental building block of the economy. It's one of the reasons why the United States uh, business e uh, w environment and and the American economy is the strongest in the world because of bankruptcies. Absolutely. Explain. Well, bankruptcy was uh, is something that's expressly in the Constitution that it's a, a power of Congress. It's a federal f a federal responsibility to mm -hmm. make laws on bankruptcy. So it's something that's been around forever. You know, when when the when when the nation was founded, we had things like debtors prisons, and we didn't have uniform uh, bankruptcy laws. But eventually, that's horrible. Yeah, they we had... were tar and feathering people, right? That's mm -hmm. sure. I mean, we were doing about... worse things than that at that point. Yeah, yeah. Still. Trust me, I know. Right, <laughs> slavery, I but yeah. But mm -hmm. the debtor's prison's intense. Oh, yeah. So, oh, that's interesting. It's 
it's more modern within the modernity of this society. Yeah, and then but then in uh, but the bankruptcy laws developed. We had a we finally came up with a uniform law in uh, the late eighteen nineties, uh, late eighteen hundreds, and then uh, in nineteen seventy eight they revised the bankruptcy law. The modern bankruptcy law was created in nineteen seventy eight, and that's the difference. So when you're looking at constitutionalism, the idea of bankruptcy, what you're looking at is for specifically the individual, so that we do not oppress and repress the individual person who then becomes technically a slave to their debt. But now we're seeing more and more that it's the modernity of the big business boom. So once you get that industrialization, you get these big mm -hmm. businesses, especially going into the 70s, primarily in the 80s, it becomes the crutch of a big business to say, we just don't pay our debt, we filed for bankruptcy, and it saves them all the time. So how is this the, how is this the, the existence of the modern economy instead yeah. of the bane. No, so no, 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 no. <laughs> Some you can either of you summarize what you just said. The history is sentence. actually fascinating. Okay. Uh, that's that's not a good summary. But um so so the railroads in the mid eighteen hundreds, mm -hmm. uh they they overbuilt and uh, overexpanded and it was and it was really uh too much and by the 1860s 70s there were they were defunct uh but they couldn't just you know, liquidate all the railroads. They had to come up with an organized process, and 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 the modern restructuring laws, reorganization laws for big businesses started coalescing around then because you couldn't just say, okay, let it all go, laissez faire. Who cares, right? There had to be a there had to be a process to deal with the restructuring of of these kinds of debts, and the and it was a, a naturally a federal process when we're talking about a transcontinental railroad, right? Um, and then uh, that that merged with uh with so per, this gave birth this railroad crisis gave birth to the need for bankruptcy and the for, creation for of larger for laws. larger large company. organizations and the the bankruptcy laws combined the 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 consumer the personal and and the big business in in one uh statute title 11 of the united states code and so on the personal side you've got chapter 7 chapter 13 um, chapter seven is liquidation. You get to get rid of all of your debts, cancellation of all debts, uh, full discharge uh, in exchange for a liquidation of your assets. Your assets get sold. So, you know, you have uh, you have some stocks, you have a house, you have a car. If there's equity in that beyond what is exempt, what's protected for an individual to have like a little nut left over for to live um, that gets sold and your creditors get paid off. But you get a fresh start. Your, your your debts are wiped clean. Uh, chapter 13, you, you have to go through a repayment process. How does that work? What does that mean? Your debts are fresh? You like, have a fresh start, mm -hmm. you get a discharge. That's what discharge means. Where does that loophole come from? How does that loophole exist? Well, it used to be you had to serve your time in the debtor's prison, and then you'd be discharged mm -hmm. from prison. Mm -hmm. debtor's prison but we don't do that anymore uh you are allowed meaning, meaning i can borrow a thousand dollars from this guy a thousand dollars from this guy and then tomorrow just pull a lever and i don't owe you any more money well i wouldn't recommend doing it for two thousand yeah, dollars because $2, that that's 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 the cost of a chapter seven for an individual <laughs> mm -hmm. but uh but yeah i mean if if you're having hard times um, can you talk directly into the mic Sorry, if you if you if you're you it, but. if you are going through some difficult times and you need to rely on credit card debt which has an ridiculous interest rate for mm -hmm. good reason um that's unsecured debt there's there's nothing they can do to you other than sue you for it they can't repossess anything right they would need to get a judgment first and then they can start going after mm -hmm. you for your assets now let's say you got a hundred thousand dollars of credit card debt now we're talking about real money now we're talking about like a lot of interest 18 percent. you know you're you, you know that's your that's your income uh and so what you do is if if you see that you have you know, you're not doing well right now. You have no income right now. You've got a hundred thousand plus of credit card debt, maybe less, mm -hmm. maybe it's medical bills, maybe it's, um, you know, personal, yeah. personal loans, student personal loans. Student Let's put loans. student loans aside, personal student, not government, student personal, loans. Not, personal loans, yeah, period. What are you awesome. doing to say, say, explain what you're saying. Don't talk That's about edu educational yeah. debt versus Educate. why, why, no, no this is why not. That's all I want you to cannot about. get rid of it in bankruptcy unless you have an mm -hmm. undue hardship. Mm -hmm. What does undue hardship mean? I don't know. 
oh, well, the bankruptcy courts say that it's like really bad. Yeah, you'd have to look, you, you get AIDS and polio and syphilis and still they're like, but you can pay. But did you try? Did, <laughs> did you try you in try good faith? Enough? Did you, when you say undo, I get that there was a flood. Hurricane yeah. Katrina hurt a lot of people, but some of them are paying. Okay, okay, so okay. Like, you, so, you, so you, you, need, you need though. to, you need to, you need to have a, a really, really, really bad situation and really need to try to get a job. Fine. And then you can, and then maybe you can get rid of your debt. Not fine, even. fine, and still, fine. And so, but still, how what's do we, the percentage? What's the percentage of people that get rid of that? It's, it's super hard because- Less than 10%. Because you have to sue Sal, uh, whatever, fr- Sally, May, Sally whatever. May or whoever. You have to sue the Department of Education to get your discharge. You, you who are destitute have to file a lawsuit and win at trial against- Whatever huge the man, <laughs> huge government. whatever he just said. No, but yeah. that's a real Sally thing because, because I remember it being for real. something like the discharge is like less than ten percent, and the people who win are is less than two percent. Am I incorrect? I mean, that? you, you I mean, that's probably about right. You have to get you have to either be really good at being your own lawyer in trial, which is unusual, mm-hmm. <laughs> or you have to get a pro bono lawyer, which is hard to get and you have, you have to have a really good case to be able to get a pro bono a lawyer assigned to you for that kind of situation how did we get here there must have been some kind of bill or something ronald is- reagan i said what i said right. i said what i said I, I i can't tell you the exact legislative history of this part of the code but it's but this but this particular judicial standard has been around since 85. okay oh thank you interesting. i'm so sorry did i say <laughs> and, Ronald Reagan? And, and the word undo well that's it's in it's actually a new york bankruptcy court uh, it's called the brunner test but um but the the bankruptcy code's been around since 1978 i don't remember what if there was an amendment that added the uh undue hardship uh standard the undue hardship standard is fine. The exemption to not allow student loans to get out is really concerning because my understanding is that it's stuck into a list of things that it is very clearly nothing alike. Can you- and also, don't worry if you owe taxes. It's pretty much, it's anything. If you owe the government, they still want. Their oh yeah, is that true? taxes aren't as bad? Yeah, it's not as hard. But if you owe the government, taxes aren't as bad. Student loans are nearly impossible. Well, there was a time where the government was involved in student loans making money off of student loans or at least facilitating and Sally Mae used to be exclusively created for student loans. Oh, they still are. Navient went away and now there's a new one. So so it's it's a it's a it's an interesting political environment. Uh, unfortunately, consumers and student debt borrowers don't have a great lobby. Uh, the financial institutions that are that get welfare from the US government in this vein do have a lobby. And when we talk about subsidized student loans, what are we actually talking about? We're talking about a federal backstop to the lending institutions who make money off of students. I like this guy. Who's this guy? Thanks. We should like this federal guy. backstop, meaning they're insuring it. So when you or me or you or you signed a piece of paper that says, sure, 6% interest, $100,000, who cares? They're just putting these papers in front of me. Why don't I sign this? I need to go to school. And they gave me a t-shirt. They gave me a t-shirt. Yeah. And, and the schools are totally into this. It's like, $55,000 a year, $85,000 a year. Who cares? Somebody else is is writing a check for it. I just need to go to school. And and so there's this crazy inflation um before inflation. I mean let's not we're not we're not, I'm not talking about 2022 inflation. I'm talking about like why the hell is a crappy third tier law school or undergraduate private school charging $60,000 a year. And we're not talking about Thomas Jefferson in San Diego, just to let you know. (laughs) I'm talking about like, I'm talking about like 90% of of private schools. Also like cooking culinary schools that are like $33,000 where you can't get a job. What normal person can actually afford $60,000 a year? I went to school abroad. Uh, to go to a crappy right. private totally. school. I went to school abroad for a half a year and it was like 500 bucks, the whole thing, like all in with books. So what is the reason why this is possible? Because of, because of, because, because of subsidies for the big lending institutions that make student loans. Now this is- What do you mean the, by subsidies? But What do the, you mean by subsidies? I mean that if you default on your student debt obligation, the bank isn't holding is isn't hold, is, isn't holding the bag. It's the federal government is gonna is is guaranteeing that. They're guaranteeing it. It's so that's why there's no underwriting. That's why an 18 year old can get into hundred thousand dollars of debt. If you go to the bank at 18 and say, "Hey, 
can I get a $10,000 loan for this great business idea? They'll look at you like you're great. Are you out of your mind? $10,000, kid, you don't have no experience. You have no experience. Can I get $10,000 so that I can get this piece of property? You will. How will you ever pay right. that? Well, can I get $200,000 for a college that I may or may not so, finish? So, yeah. So I'm, I, I, Here we I'm, go. I'm politically progressive, but on this issue, I'm, I'm libertarian and probably and probably are saying is I'm saying things that are, is offensive to a lot of Democrats because they love all these subsidies to the to the schools. So you get rid of student of student loans, the whole system, and you probably get rid of like 50 percent of of the entire educational industrial complex. Whoa, that's a real thing. I mean, right. You, because because like it's all this it's all this monopoly more, money. It's honest. monopoly money. Yeah, probably more. Because nobody can afford to spend $50,000 a year. Like real people no. cannot actually afford out of their pocket $50,000 a year to, to go to name your name your school that isn't, you know. UCLA Law even. It's no, 60 UCLA grand. Law is actually, it's actually a great school. You're going to a tier one school also. You have a, you'll make us, you'll make a decent income when you leave there. Thing. You can always make a decent income. About, you can always make a decent income. That doesn't matter. Why are we charging the UCLA Law students more than any of them? It should be across the board. But there's, there's no but thinking like this. Like, let's, Harvard is inflated. Even if it's 80 grand a year and it's worth a million dollars a year to have Harvard behind how, you for the rest how much of your career. Do people, they're charging too much money. How much do people pay to go to one of these unaccredited law schools, these non ab accredited law schools sure. that that have like a one percent or five percent uh bar pass rate how much do people pay i don't thomas know jefferson? I, I, thomas I, jefferson no, I, is is accredited, it's, it's accredited i think let me not throw thomas jefferson under the bus <laughs> but there's but there's I brought that up because i have a friend who just went but there's there. a bunch of schools like like let's go I'm to sorry, the here. let's go to like the bottom of the barrel here there's a bunch of law schools that are not aba accredited nobody should be going to those law schools i think we can all stipulate to that we can, and also why is socialism okay until 12th grade why are school free until 12th grade and everyone's okay with it but as soon as you go to college all of a sudden what are you a communist you want free college? You want low, inexpensive college? You socialist pig! Mm. It's like well, look, look. We if if, if if we if we want if the if as a society we want to be supporting colleges, we should we should have the money go directly, not have it go flowing through the students who can't afford it. That that just doesn't make sense. So so this is this is this I think is I mean the problem is that we've we've come up with this compromise that. That just again, there's no lobby for the sure. for for the for the students who who are. Who and by are the way, we should loan them money to hire lobbyists. <laughs> the reason we're speaking about this Subsidized is because it lobbying. plays such a huge part in bankruptcy to begin with. Well, it plays right. a huge part. It plays it's majority debt of people coming out, especially 24 to 35, and that demographic majority of their debt is specifically student loans. I don't know if that's so, true. It might be medical debt, right? So, the, so look, no, and medical debt's not as big a deal as as some might think. But it, but it, we're talking about in the trillion, like over a trillion dollars of student loan debt out there. That's a real thing. And uh, yeah, it's like I mean, it's it rivals credit card debt. I don't know. I mean, I think credit card debt's more, but we're talking about real money. Overall, credit card debt more people, but I'm, I'm giving that specific 24 to 35. It's it's now. it's huge. It's it's a, it's huge and you can't get rid of it in bankruptcy as, as a practical matter. Like, yeah. But you can get rid of credit card debt. You, you can, can get rid of yes. other types of debt and you can't get rid of student student loan debt, which is a problem which needs to be addressed and fixed within the government today. It would, it would be, I mean, my, my view is like, get rid of, of student, subs, uh, student loan subsidies altogether. And some people might say, well, that's like way too drastic. I'm like, well, yeah. Big systemic change, you know, that would be cool. Um, and again, I'll, I think the Democrats you would be opposed just to it. pull that kind of lever, though, without having thought through what would that do? Yeah, I think it would bank. I think it would bankrupt uh, a, a good number of schools. private schools, uh, maybe some public schools, too. But I mean, That's it's exciting. it's nobody. Nobody's really talk. Nobody's really analyzed it from this perspective. I mean, I think I've read probably an op ed in The Wall Street Journal that that looked at it from this sort of libertarian perspective. But um, you know, it's 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 just wrong. Who is this guy? I like this guy. Yeah, yeah he's cool. We got to talk about <laughs> if that got us going. This is so interesting. The Texas two step, which sounds like a dance, but it is. But it's a legal dance yeah. where mm -hmm. what is it? J and J had these asbestos type lawsuits but no mm -hmm. it's like toxic tort maybe maybe you could set it yeah up. Set sure a little so apparently um don't use baby powder right you don't need it i mean i've had babies you don't need baby powder but 
the talc in. So one second, mm. I'm not past that. Really? Like that's the, is it wasn't just one type of the baby powder. It was just across the board. The product they created for our children was like bad. Talc. I mean, I think it might have asbestos in it. Um, I think the talc that the, the product that included talc was, um, is talc just the cause is that what that cancer is? in people who were using mm. it regularly. Mm. So there's like 40,000 different lawsuits, including class actions against J&J in connection with, uh, or maybe more in connection with, uh, with, you know, toxic torts. Um, and so, I mean, it's a big deal. There's a lot of I could lawsuits. be mistaken. I think the firm I'm with right now has a big player in that toxic tort case. Probably. Like, there was a lot of stuff that they knew. I mean, I mean, there's, it's there's, all there's, 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 there's tens of thousands so of lawsuits and yeah. uh, I, mean, I assume uh, hundreds of thousands of uh, of plaintiffs when you consider all the class actions, uh, maybe millions of people affected by by this. Um, so, look, J&J has has like serious liabilities, billions and billions and billions of dollars of liabilities, bad debt. Right. So maybe hundreds of billions. And um, so what they do is they do something called the Texas two-step, which means that they create, they go to Texas, they put, you know, the whole, the whole kit and caboodle of their enterprises in Texas. And they, 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 on day one of, of the pro of this, of the process, they split uh, good co from bad co. So meaning they take the toxic assets and they move them to bad co called LTL and they move and they keep the good assets in, in good co and, you know, you know, uh, um, you know, bubble gum, uh, scotch tape, I don't know, whatever the hell they do. Right. Um, COVID vaccines, that's all in good co. And, uh, so then the next day, day two, for now. LTL moves to moves to North Carolina. They open a bank account in North Carolina and they file a bankruptcy case there. So they have no connection to North Carolina other than the fact that just open a bank account. Now they now they have picked their forum of choice, which is North Carolina. Why North Carolina? Because North Carolina tolerates uh, releases of, of third parties. So you can go through bankruptcy and get a benefit for a non a person that's not in bankruptcy, a person or a corporation like J&J. &J. So Goodco uh, through through the Texas two step uh, is is uh, ice is insulated. Uh, and immune from this, uh, from liabilities of bad co. Okay. Now, in this particular case, it didn't work out so well. So bad co goes to North Carolina and files for bankruptcy. Good co stays in Texas. Yeah, but all of all of your uh, your 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 people, uh, the who's the, my people, the, tox the, to the toxic the toxic tort lawyers, the plaintiffs bar, uh, screamed and hollered and objected and actually said, look, this the forum shopping aspect of this, the fact that they were able to do this Texas two step and 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 manufacture venue in North Carolina inappropriate because they wanted judges Hang who would on, rubber explain stamp. Explain the third party liability release. Just break that down one notch so we understand why they moved to North Carolina. OK, so let's take another example. All right, Purdue Pharma. All right, Purdue Pharma is in the news, dope sick, et cetera, opioid crisis. They created it by fraud and, you know, hundreds of people died. Uh, Sacklers uh, were the family that that is uh, that allegedly, uh, you know, killed all these people through their fraud and uh, criminal activities. Why in did you Purdue Pharma air quotes with allegedly? Because that's like what news people use. I mean, they did that, right? They we know that allegedly. they allegedly we know that use with McKinsey and all these and all these big time um, you know professionals. Uh, they created a process where they were selling o o um, they were selling opiates. They were selling uh, Oxy. oxycontin to doctors and lying to them about and giving them uh, kickbacks and knowing that about it, the addictive nature. Addictive they were saying it's not addictive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it okay. was addictive. It was extremely <laughs> addictive. They knew it was extremely addictive, and yet they were selling it. And, and they, they made billions of dollars. And they made billions and billions and billions. And then over the last 20 years, while they knew that they were eventually, you know, the shit would eventually hit the fan and they'd actually get in trouble for this, they moved billions of their of their wealth to offshore accounts in the Jersey Islands in the English Channel, or the, the Isle of Jersey in the Isle English Jersey. Channel. 
And so they have like 11 or 12 or some billions of dollars hiding in like Cayman or whatever do you places. you watch documentaries on Netflix? I do, I do, I do. I tease it out of him. I tease it out of him. We got okay. the whole story. So now. the Purdue Pharma case was filed in White I, Plains, I I missed those in White Plains New York, yeah. because the judge in White Plains, New York is favorable to non-debtor, non-consensual third-party releases. I'll repeat that. Non-debtor, non-consensual third-party releases. So if you are if you are a third party who is really the person in control of of the company in bankruptcy you may be able to uh, you may be able to obtain a release of of civil liability even though you didn't personally file for bankruptcy if you are in that jurisdiction so you got to forum shop you got to you got to find the right venue because the circuits are split on this issue the circuits do not see eye to eye on whether non-debtor non-consensual third-party releases are constitutional or authorized by the bankruptcy code constitutional because it's not due process if if you're being told by a by some random judge that you can't sue third parties and you don't really have a day in court that that seems like kind of a due process issue but it's also not in, how did a, that get invented that these people could just get cleared up in bankruptcy even though they have nothing to do with the bankruptcy or they're just what they're in the jurisdiction what does that mean they're in the jurisdiction they live in the jurisdiction like the Sacklers moved to New York when they filed in New York so this way they could uh there. so so Purdue Pharma is headquartered in Connecticut and they you know White Plains is close to to Connecticut and uh there's only one judge there and they know that that judge is friendly toward these things so they they can they were able to choose that form because they had like a, they're like a, we they like had like Henry. a PO box there or something they had some office there that's even sick. though they're not even though well, you see a lot of companies that say white plains new york and you're like what's in white plains new york this judge this judge <laughs> but, is in white but plains, because new york. of the outcry over over this action the southern district of new york has completely changed things so you can no longer automatically get the white plains judge for for a complex chapter 11 case mm -hmm. so you you go it gets randomized and any bankruptcy judge in the southern district of new york specifically in response to the outcry over purdue now jumping back to j and j OK, uh, Purdue was already pending for some time when when the LTL, um, you know, bad co for J&J &J was filed in North Carolina um, because of the outcry and in the context of Purdue and other bad cases like the Boy Scouts, um, uh, the bankruptcy, the bankruptcy judge um, granted the motion to change venue uh, because like, I don't want this toxic case. Right. Even though it would have been good for business in North so again, Carolina, they do this divisive merger in Texas where mm -hmm. they split off the company. They do. Good co and back. Go keeps all the good assets back. It takes debt liability, the potential lawsuits on the baby powder. Now you own the product of the baby powder. Now they move it to North Carolina. And, and then, uh, and then immediately plaintiffs, attorneys, bankruptcy attorneys come in and say, this venue is improper. This is manufactured. This is a sham. All which of, all of which is true. Because there's and they no say, reason for them to be in North Carolina. And they say, Carolina. you know, J&J &J is headquartered in New Jersey. Venue should be in New Jersey. This was very cool. I like this guy. Who's this guy? <laughs> this guy is really cool. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I'm really glad your wife pushed you to do this. This is <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she, I, you, know, I, you didn't want to do it. it, is, it is no, I, 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 I wanted to do it, but I had. Well, but you I, know but what? I, I had something it doesn't scheduled. matter. It doesn't matter. You're here. It doesn't <laughs> matter. We we win. Do you have anything else that you'd want to leave the audience with? And if yes or no, regardless, I have one last question after. Um, yeah. I mean, uh, I think it's good for people to be engaged in society uh just understand uh, what's going on in government understand what's going on in the law this is a this is a, this is a piece of it uh and um, well I'm, yes you're yeah. you're preaching to the choir here and where can people find you i'm at a firm called danning gill mm -hmm. um, have you ever been to one of teron's shows i would love to go to your show, show that's a way to engage in society I'm it's a societal <laughs> pillar of los angeles I'm not even i would i would love Terror to I, thursdays I, I, at yeah. laugh factory you guys gotta go every check thursday it out. every, every thursday. thursday it's a religion how like just i don't know what is it 300 days 300 whatever 52 52 thursdays i'm not good with and days just, and, they're just amazing shows packed people love it people wow love and are you the are you the mc it's my show so you see a lot of tehran Oh my God. It's a great amount of Tehran because he brings the black Persian Jewish, like, are you black and Persian? Yeah. Oh, wow. How amazing is this? And is Tehran your first name? Oh yes, it is. Like wow. the city and the comedian lineup every single time might be a little too Jewy, but there's a lot of like 
just diversity I mean, and the, and the diversity bring them all together i yeah. love it i've brought all types of people and it's it's one of my favorite things to do you should totally you should totally check it out one time I'm there. My last question by the way my last question yeah. is what is love to you what does it mean to you do you believe in it are you in love Okay, so uh, yeah. You want him to file for bankruptcy? He's married. The guy's married. Like this is yeah. what are we doing to this guy? Hey, <laughs> you love allegedly, allegedly. It's what makes a Subaru a Subaru. <laughs> what does that mean? Oh, we, oh, it's it's an ad. It's an ad. You've never seen this. Ad. Of course you haven't. You are not a lesbian. Here's the thing. What? I don't write the rules. Are we going to act like Subarus and lesbians don't go together? They are do. It's, like that's it's, not a thing. It's, that's it's, a thing. It's, it's right. There's been articles about it. Yeah, it's legit. It's like thing. in the LA Times. It's that's not. It's not thing. made up. So I. I love my wife Where and my kids. This Thank you very much. How both of you. you are, what news site are you both visiting? You obviously, obviously don't play a lot of trivia. You don't, and you don't zeitgeist <laughs> it up. You're not a researcher into the zeitgeist. You kind of just do you listen to. You obviously don't listen to NPR. NPR. No, this I is like not. NPR. This is not an NPR listener. I do, listen to NPR. Do, do they have, have like an hour on like Subarus and lesbians? <laughs> wait, wait, with Terry wait, Fresher wait, wait. or whatever, <laughs> like with some esoteric last name. Okay, yeah. So just, just please love, indulge, indulge. Yeah, then we're done. He's been looking for a wife. You know, I, th I think people overcomplicate things you know, most of the is... time. Most people who ask questions like this overcomplicate things. They think too hard. Give me the analysis paralysis. Love is you meet somebody and you get along and you're happy and you and you you try to you know make things work and be together. Yeah. Seth, and I love you, you and be. I love you. I have a question. It's how do you spell love? You don't. You feel it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being on the show. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. Thank you.